up fam welcome back to the channel i hope you all been well as usual and today's episode we're going to be doing a fun install it's going to be a switch pro and a power tray so it's going to be helping us out with cable management as well as getting ready for our auxiliary accessories compressor locker all that stuff so stay tuned it's going to be a good one all right so first things first what we're going to be doing is open up the packaging and we're just going to be making sure we have everything so <clears throat> We're going to start with the Switch Pro. So in the box, you get the buttons for the Switch Pro panel. So this is where all of your switches are going to be wired to. Uh, it's going to be RGB light up panel too. And it's just going to have one wire running from the, from the engine bay straight to this. So it's going to be a lot cleaner. No bundles of wires everywhere. And yeah, it's going to be good. You're also gonna get all the stickers, depending on what you're gonna label your switches as. This is your Switch Pro module. And it does have a nice little diagram here, so you can always remember which switch is wired to which wire. Okay. Of course, you're gonna have some instructions. Uh, great to follow. And yeah, they actually have a legend in the back for you to label them, just in case you forget. Of course, we're gonna have all of our wiring harnesses, as well as the wire for the switch, our power wire, as well as some wire loom and the hardware that you're gonna need for this install. All right, so first part we're gonna be doing is doing our power tray. So this isn't included with the Switch Pro itself, but it's a great way to keep your cables all organized um, and helps you put a bus bar, terminal blocks, all that stuff in one central location and it just looks really clean. So when you get the packaging, it's gonna be all nice and sealed. Uh, for this one, it's gonna be the kit that comes with the two MRBF um, fuses. So they're marine rated battery fuses. So they're pretty much water sealed. Um, good just in case you get water under the engine or in the engine bay you're also going to get your cables you're going to have two power cables as well as two ground or negative cables um, and they're all really high quality they have a nice uh, wire loom on it that protects the wires underneath um, everything looks super clean uh, great quality and finally we have the tray itself and it actually comes in powder coated black now. So it used to be all silver um, and now they do come standard as black powder coat. There's a lot of different companies that make similar things to this. Uh, the reason that I decided to go with this one is because I liked that the design raises it a little higher over the fuse box. Um, some of them sit very flush to the fuse box and you're going to have to take this whole thing completely out just to access anything. I still might have to take it off to get in there, but there will be a lot more space for me to work um, under this. Uh, another great thing is that behind each of the mounting points, they have threaded inserts. So you don't have to worry about holding a nut and then balancing that underneath and putting the washer and screw on the top. And yeah, so it just saves you a lot of hassle. It's already threaded. You don't have to worry about holding anything underneath. So this is gonna be the package with all the hardware and instructions, as well as the mounting arm that goes on the side of the tray. So for now, we don't really need this mounting arm because that's gonna be what we're using in the engine bay. So we'll put that on the side for now. Uh, if you do need to follow instructions, they have a list of all their different instructions on this QR code. So you just scan it with your uh, camera and it's good to go. They'll have all the ones labeled. Of course, we have all the hardware, <clears throat> different hardware. This is going to be for in the engine when we mount it onto the truck. And then this is going to be the mounting hardware for the plate itself. And yes, they do include a sticker. Everyone's favorite. So first thing we're gonna do is start setting up this tray. Main thing you're gonna to wanna to have is a Phillips head screwdriver. First thing you wanna do is before you set everything up, just make sure you have everything oriented the same way. Um, so this side uh, where they have their logo, it's gonna be facing towards the front of the truck. The part where 
the switch pro goes will be facing towards the firewall all right so for the first step what we're going to do is install the blue seas um, fuse tray and how that's going to work is if you take off the cover you'll see one side is negative and one side is positive so you want to make sure that this is oriented in the correct way so positive is going to be on the same side as the switch pro negative is going to be towards the front of the truck so we're just going to set them on there's four screws and they just thread right in we're not going to snug it super tight we're just going to have it a little loose so we can make some adjustments later next thing we're going to do is install the bus bar just a quick note when you do install this there are going to be two screws that are a little shorter than the rest of the hardware and that's going to be for this bus bar This one doesn't really matter which way you put it because it's just going to be going one side to the negative and the other side is going to be grounded to the truck. Okay, what we're going to do is take off this nut, take off the lock washer, keep these on the side. We're going to take off the nut and lock washer from the blue siege tray. Nut on this side, leave that there. So here's where this piece is going to come in. And if you look at it, there's going to be one side that dips a little lower and then one side that goes up. So they're kind of opposite. You want to make sure the one that's going lower is going towards this side and the one that's going higher is going to the bus block. So when you set it down, it'll sit nice and flush. So this is when you want to have a little bit of play so we can adjust and make sure everything is not getting pulled. And once we have it in the right spot, we'll tighten down the bus block. Okay, take this off. Okay, double check that it fits. Everything's lining up. Okay, then we'll tighten down this. Now that we have this all lined up, we're gonna put this negative cable there, put the lock washer and then the nut on this side. And then we're gonna put the nut on this side. All right, so now we got that all secured. Next thing we're gonna do is tighten down our terminal block. All right, so now that we have everything set up, basically uh, for the next part, we're gonna install this rubber grommet. This is gonna be for our positive cable that's gonna be coming from the battery. It's gonna be slipping through this hole and it's gonna land right here. So what we're gonna do is just kinda slip it in, work it slowly, just like that. Okay, make sure it's just sitting flush, perfect. So next step is we're going to take the last two screws from the hardware and that's going to be for our switch pro, which will be going right here. So now we have everything set up. We're ready to mount the switch pro. So since this side is going towards the cab of the truck, the switch pro is going to face this way with the blank side facing towards the terminal block. So you don't have to tighten these screws down super tight because um, we're gonna have to take it off uh, again later and I'll show you guys why. Next step is to take the wiring harness for the Switch Pro. Uh, before you get super overwhelmed and stuff, uh, we're just gonna follow this same diagram that they have for the switches. They'll tell you which switch is which, so don't panic. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Okay. What I'm gonna start doing first is separating the wires. So we're gonna go switch one, switch two, switch three, and switch four. So these first four wires on the far left, if you're looking at the Switch Pro, 
which are red, yellow, orange, and black. These are gonna be corresponding through for switches one through four. So we're gonna just start with switch one and feed it under. Switch one, and we're gonna run it to this side. So a little trick just to kind of keep these wires organized as you're separating them is take these screws out and what we're gonna do is pinch each of these wires just right under the screw head like that. It doesn't have to be super tight, but just to hold it in place. Uh, so that one is gonna be switch one. We're gonna take our next wire, run it under. So now that we got our next wire, we're gonna run the second wire for switch two. And you don't need to make these screws super tight to hold the wire because once the wire is under the, the head of the screw, it'll be enough to hold it in place. Once we start working with the last four switches, um, they're gonna be two wires each to uh, accommodate for the higher output uh, and higher amperage and everything for um, compressors and things that need more power. So we're gonna run two wires under. So this is for switch five. Run two wires under, and then we're gonna do the same thing. separated into the terminal block for where they're going to go what we can do is take a set of wire cutters and we're going to trim all of the wires <clears throat> before you do so make sure that in the back you leave enough slack so there's not a lot of tension on the where the wires insert into the connector this step you don't really have to do this but the reason that i'm doing it is because i want to cut everything nicely so everything looks uniform and all of these wires have the same bend and same length coming from the cable. Just in case, it's always good to save these extra wires just in case you need to splice them or solder them back in. And, um, you know, if you're relocating your Switch Pro and you just need to move the terminal block and whatnot, just keep these in case so you can rewire them to the same color. Now that we have all of our wires cut, what we can start doing is adding our connectors. First thing I'm gonna do is take off the screws. What I'm gonna do next is take the Switch Pro off just so it's a little easier to work with, and then um, we'll move on to the next step. And the next step, what we're gonna do is take some strippers and we're gonna strip all of the wires, get them ready for these connectors. Um, just a quick note, for these connectors, there's gonna be four blue ones and then four yellow ones. The blue ones are gonna be for your switches one through four, since it's a single wire. And then the yellow ones are gonna be for switches four through, uh, five through eight, excuse me. And that's gonna be for the two wires, so it's a little bigger. connectors they have a side that has it comes up and a side that's flat so you just want to make sure that that side is flat is going to be going onto the terminal block so it's so if you're looking at it like this you don't want it to be like this you want it to be flat side down on the terminal block Alright, so for this next part, what we're going to do is take the heat gun, we're going to hit all the connectors so make sure it's nice and sealed, and um, yeah. Okay. 
Just a quick note, try to be mindful of what's behind the heat gun and the wire. If you have anything plastic behind here or anything like that, you don't want to melt anything. This next step, we're going to be mounting the new connectors onto the terminal block. warm up these connectors one more time and just make everything a lot nicer so here watch this just be careful not to burn the terminal block or melt it while these are all warm we're going to take our switch pro and just bend down just like how it would be going in place push down each connector just so it looks nice and clean. So once that's all finished, when you mount this up, it'll be a lot cleaner. So now that it's all tightened up, you can take a look. You can really see how clean it looks. Everything looks nice and organized. Nothing is touching the Switch Pro and yeah, it just looks better overall. So that wasn't really a necessary step that you had to do, but it's something that I'm gonna do just to make everything look a lot nicer. So for this next part, it's not really gonna to pertain to anyone with an automatic transmission Tacoma. Um, they make these trays for the automatics, but because I have a manual, I have this, which is my clutch fluid, and that's mounted right where I need to mount the tray. So what I'm gonna to have to end up doing is making a bracket that'll slide this over and relocate it a little closer towards the firewall. And then I'm gonna have to shorten the two, the hose that runs to this, and hopefully I'll be able to fit the power tray in front of it. So I was looking through some parts and random things and I found this little bracket that actually might work. So, what I'm thinking is mounting it here so that focus mounting it here and then having this sit like this that way I don't even have to cut the hose all right so we have to do a little bit of MacGyvering but I think I gotta figure it out so I don't know if you can see this but that little bracket that I found fits perfect over here I just pinched it with a washer nut and a locking bolt or a locking uh, washer and then I have it, it's like an L shape, so it runs this way, and there's enough space for me to mount the reservoir right here with the original bracket, and I have another um, lock washer, bolt and nut on this side. So, uh, I think that should be good, it's pretty solid. I mean, um, if I need to in the future, I can get another bracket and just make one that goes off of here and tap it into the fender. But for now, this will do. And then I'll be able to mount the tray right here so it should be perfect for the next step what i'm going to be doing is running the wire for the switch pro um buttons i'm going to run this through the firewall so i'm going to take off some trim pieces here and then i should be able to stick it through the grommet just a quick note when you are taking off the trim pieces here there's actually a little cover that goes right on this bolt here. So you just unscrew it, it's usually like hand tight, so you can just unscrew it with your fingers, take it off, and then you can pop out this piece. So now that we have all the trim removed, we're gonna pull back some of the insulation in the carpet, um, and then we should be able to see the grommet. So now that we got our wire hanger and the first part of the connector pulled through, we're just going to pull it the rest of the way out. This is the part that's going to go into the Switch Pro once we get everything hooked up. For now, we're just going to leave it on the side because we still got to finish setting up the Switch Pro.
I actually forgot to press record when I was putting on this sidearm but for the manual transmissions they're a little different so instead of having two bolts down there there's only one bolt and I had to reuse the factory one that came out so I just put one down there and tightened down real good and then I used the provided one it's a 10 mil as well up here with the nut on this side and I cinched that down and then once those are good I tighten down the bolts over here next thing we did was install the dual MBRF fuse uh, one's going to be a 125 amp one is going to be the 100 amp so the 125 is going to be going to the switch pro and the 100 is just going to be going to the blue seas 12 volt what I did so far was attach the power cable to the blue C tray as well as to the back of the switch pro I did the grounds so the ground came from here right to the side as well as the ground cable from the back of the switch pro comes to this grounding point here next thing I'm going to do is connect the switch that goes to the cab after that we're going to connect our power lines to the battery and we should be able to test and make sure that our switch pro on the inside is all lighting up correctly how it should and for the fuse that I tapped into for the ignition wire I ran it through here so I just kind of stuck snuck it up next to this wiring harness that came up through the fuse box and then I have it running around here right to this fuse so from now I'm just gonna button this up and then we're gonna get this thing started to make sure everything works all right so now I got the switch bro connected on the inside I'm gonna fire up the truck to make sure that everything lights up on there okay so as you can see all the lights turn on next thing we're gonna do is to make sure that these dim when I turn on the headlights all right I don't know if you guys saw that but the headlights went on and then the lights dimmed I'm not actually going to mount this switch up anywhere yet because I'm working on something and hopefully in the next few weeks you guys will be able to see. So stay tuned for that episode for sure. Just like how I was saying, um, I'm not going to install the switch pro panel on the inside yet. I am working on something, I'm not going to say what yet, but hopefully in the next few weeks or so I should be able to get a video for that going and then I will show you where I'm going to be mounting that um, panel on the inside. It's a pretty straightforward install. It doesn't take too long, but if you want everything to look clean, you want the wires to look nice, you want everything to be, you know, tucked away nicely and not just wherever, um, it's always best to take your time when you're doing wiring, especially. It's a tedious process, but you thank yourself in the long run when you do it right the first time and you don't have to go back and stress and redo everything. Do it right the first time so you don't have to do it again later. I'm gonna throw in some B-roll clips just so you guys can check it out, see what it looks like. I think it looks super slick and I can't wait to get some auxiliary lights and accessories going on this thing. So other than that, yeah, check it out. That's going to be it for this install video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things. Stay tuned for the next episode. Shoots.